everybody, Jared Jones. Florida has had the good fortune of having a long, lengthy list of glowing reports about its strengthening economy, its growing population, and overall housing stability in the face of many of the marketplaces in the West going in the opposite direction. But I'm here to tell you if you're considering moving to Florida or if you already own a home here, there are several signs of cracks throughout a few marketplaces here in the Central Florida area. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out the top five housing markets, go into specific detail of exactly what the housing data shows in these particular markets. Because if you are considering moving here or if you own a home here now, I'm sure you wanna know where the deals are gonna be found in Florida first as 2023's housing correction continues to manifest itself even in some of the strongest states. Some of the data that I was looking at here in Florida was actually pretty shocking to see. These are major metro areas. These were darling cities even a year ago, and they've already undergone a major shift. Now, I'm not making a prediction of any specific crash. I'm gonna specifically point to some very important data changes that are signifying that these just might be great areas to purchase. I'd also like to briefly tip my cap to Reventure Consulting, to Redfin, Zillow, Realtor.com, and a lot of local area Realtor Association board data that I poured through to bring this list to you. And for continuous cutting edge information in the real estate market, subscribe to the channel. Let's get started. All right, folks, as we start this market update, let's start by talking about where the interest rates are. We are currently at a 6.09% 30-year fix. The week I'm shooting this, 15-year, nobody gets those anymore, 5.14%, which shows a sign that we have been this, you know, seeing this continuous decline since back in November. Week after week, obviously, this has been spurring on a lot of positive housing news, but as you're going to see today, a lot of that really isn't necessarily transferring over into positive outcomes in the market just yet. Buyers are still a bit in shock. Affordability is still a huge issue and that has not even changed particularly in Florida. And some of the marketplaces I'm gonna show you today ultimately look like they've absolutely peaked in what the buyer's interest is in getting in on these markets and they're starting to shift. But let's get started right now. We're gonna talk about Lakeland, Florida. All right, the first marketplace that I wanna say is absolutely shifting an opportunity for a buyer's market is the Lakeland market. Now, what we're looking at right here is the available inventory in the market here in Lakeland. The reason why I like this graph, this data comes from realtor.com through venture consulting's graph work. The line, the trend line right here that you see that's dotted across the middle of this graph shows the historic average going back five years. So the news of the day, much through these photo marketplaces, are that the buyers are just not as active. This is evident when you look at graphs like this, when you see a five-year historic average in the marketplace where all the professionals are chirping, when I say professionals, real estate professionals, brokers, those on the market, hey, there's no inventory, inventory's not here. You know, we're above the five-year average in Lakeland, folks. That's not good. So inventory now is just over 3,000 listings this particular area. Growth from the average, this is a plus 20% number for this particular marketplace. Now take a look at why we know this is demand related. This graph right here shows year over year, going back three years, new listings hitting the market in Lakeland. Surprise, surprise, it's low. Why is that the case? Well, that's because months of supply is vertical. This tells us months of supply is how many homes are selling, buyers, how fast buyers are taking off property every single month, how long would it just take to sell all the inventory based on the pace of activity of the buyers? Really points to the supply chain in the marketplace. When you see this going vertical, I mean, this is a straight up, folks. This means buyers have left the building in Lakeland. This means there's going to be opportunities for purchases. Share of listings in this particular area that have actually undergone a price reduction. In Lakeland, it's 33.3%. Per, a third of all listings in Lakeland are now under price reduction in order to sell. What you have now is a very high percentage number of people competing out of the area, okay? Now, you can see nearby Orlando is at 26.5% in the entire marketplace. You know, areas south of Lakeland, far lower than that even. So, you know, when you start to see the sellers start to get nervous, there's fewer sellers than ever before bringing homes to the market but yet months of supply is lagging. And as a result, you're starting to see inventory climb. Now check this out. A second ago, I showed you a graph which represented this uh, standard in Lakeland for current inventory over the norm. Great graph, I really like it. But take a look at this. Year over year, volume of increase in listings in the Lakeland area, 
180% folks leads the state. The state led area for amount of listings over the trend means people are just in shock. The interesting thing, and I think one thing to watch in this area, Lakeland and a lot of, of kind of marketplaces that were next town over from the major center of population. When you had an LA, an Orlando, a Chicago, when those areas got super, super expensive, I've told the story before, people went to the next town out so they could finally afford something. What happens? They end up inflating that market overnight, setting the prices on fire. When it market settles, those out of town, less appealing areas experience a little bit of a potential softening. What that means is demand's gonna be waning there. You're gonna see builders become the most motivated in that area, and you're gonna see opportunities for purchases at good prices for a season, okay? Until the market finally catches legs again. All right, folks, the next place that I wanna bring your attention is the Villages. The Villages is a very popular area. I'm gonna say it makes news for interesting reasons. We'll just leave it at that. Florida often has that effect in the marketplace, the public eye, where people do crazy things and then we make news about it. People go, ha ha, they must live in Florida. Well, Villages sometimes, you know, brings itself, uh, you know, brings Florida, I should say, some attention from that aspect. But you have Orlando right here in the heart of this map, about an hour, hour and 20 minutes northwest, you see the villages. We're going to take a look at this. You know, this really has become popular because it's convenient to the interstate. You get the turnpike down to Orlando pretty fast. It's between there and Ocala, which is another kind of up and coming area. Um, not a massive city, but, you know, decent size. And people like the villages because of it, its active adult nature. I mean, there's just a lot of, you know, senior living kind of offers really well planned for that style of, of life. People like it, but take a look at the villages. Months of supply, vertical. This particular marketplace too, you have it rising above the historic average. And there's some interesting things going on because even though it's year over year inventory is way, way up, like very, very high for the market, the village is experiencing 160% year over year increase inventory. Wouldn't be too much of a concern, but it's ahead of its five year price uh, average inventory trend. When that starts happening, folks, you're in danger. You are in danger of seeing, you know, just so much more inventory than is available for, for the market to absorb. And you're seeing that at a point in time when there is just way low demand. The interesting thing with the villages is there's a standoff between the buyers and sellers. You see this 27 point only. He's like, hey, didn't we just see Lakeland have 33% price reduction? Why is this, you know, 27.9, 20%, you know? You have a stubborn seller and you have a stubborn buyer. You know, you have buyers saying, forget you, I'm not paying the price. And you have these sellers in the villages. Again, these are retirees, very low mortgage count. They don't use a lot of mortgages to buy these houses. So cash is king. And the, and the people coming in, you know, people buying all cash tend to be very scrupulous types of buyers. They're, they're thinking very clearly about what's gonna happen in the future and they're careful. And the sellers are thinking, I'm not reducing my price. So only one in four are reducing while inventory is going through the roof. And the real estate professionals here are probably pulling their hair out, trying to get everybody on the same page to make a deal happen. And they're probably going out of business. They're probably like, I'm retiring, this is a pain. But that's the story going on right there. And that's gonna be one to watch. If you're a retiree, let that thing settle. Retirement areas, 55 plus active adult golden year communities in Florida went through the roof and they are ripe for correction, folks. The next place we're gonna look at is Ocala up here, northwest of Orlando. This is also kind of like this late breaking jewel of the area where you know it's an hour and 15 minutes from Orlando. If you want an international flight, you're driving for it. You know, everything is just a little smaller, a little quieter here. I mean, the town is growing, but it's just not a massive city. Again, one of those next town over kind of Lakeland deals, popularized really because of affordability. It's historically got an agricultural base. It's got an equestrian uh, flair to it. A lot of industry of uh, sport horses, things of that nature, end up buying here, enjoying that life. But Ocala ended up blowing up, a lot of builders showing up, putting some high priced products together. And as a result, you are gonna see Ocala, I think, ripe for some deals this year. Let's take a look at the numbers. So take a look here. You had a 687 count a year ago in the inventory of active inventory. Now you've got 2,074. Year over year price growth, folks, 202%. So the average growth, the real problem with this is 
the growth in this area has led to inventory now spiking over its historic average. That is a concern. And again, when you look at the charts, big, big year over year price growth, big year over year inventory climb at the same time when buyers is backing away. Again, price cuts one out of three homes in Ocala now seeing its price cut. Gainesville is actually much, much closer as far as a major metro area near it. Uh, they're at 22% by, by comparison. So you see this, Ocala is 30, 40% higher in price cuts than it's nearby Gainesville. So interesting to see what's gonna happen there. I think there's definitely gonna be some correction around the corner for Ocala. We'll have to see how it looks. Now, the last big opportunities I wanna talk about for potential correction in the Central Florida area takes place here on the Gulf Coast. We're gonna look at Tampa and Sarasota, both of these really two major separate marketplaces. Tampa St. Pete Clears, Clearwater has its own, you know, massive section, population section. And then we have Northport, Sarasota, Brainton beneath it. Both of these are going under epic change. Obviously, they've had their fair share of challenges with hurricane after hurricane really beating a path through their doorstep recently, causing flooding and all kinds of insurance issues. And you have on top of that, the super popular, I mean, the, these coastal areas right here, massively popular. There was a lot of STEMI money that was coming out from the government. A lot of people were using that and sometimes spending it on the wrong things instead of keeping their people employed, they're buying beach houses, things of that nature taking place. And again, that's probably more exception than rule, which is obvious. But the point I'm making is, the tide has shifted, okay? I'll remind you in 2022, the marketplace started last year with Tampa headlining everything. I don't know if you all remember it and I don't have anything to show you on that, but Tampa really kind of was the, the crown jewel. Zillow was calling it the top place to live, the top place to buy, it'll be the hottest marketplace, but look what's happening, it's shifting big. Tampa, St. Pete, Clearwater, and North Port, Sarasota, Brainton, 151% increase in supply and 158%. These are two of the leading marketplaces throughout the country. And again, the really interesting thing is you can see right here, Tampa, the Villages, Lakeland, and North Port, Brainton, all of these are stacked marketplaces on top of one another. And they're absolutely shifting in seeing some of the most largest increases in inventory in the states. Again, these are numbers that are showing, you know, we're seeing these numbers coming off of epic lows, okay? I don't wanna make statistics, you know, stories out of statistics, right? You don't wanna make some, you know, crazy salacious thing that's not there, but take a look. This is another nail in the coffin. This is not good. You'd say, well, Jared, it's 150% inventory growth after a really low year, but 38%. Tampa St. Pete Clearwater has the highest amount of price reductions going on right now. Okay, so you have people that are now pushing their house to the market. Again, record low amount of people coming, bringing their house to the market, but the people that are there, they're hacking the price, bringing it down, idea of the lowest bidder. Can I bring it down low enough to get a buyer to buy off on my house so I can be the next one out? Essentially a reverse auction. Instead of the price being bid up, the price is bid down through a series of price reductions, the marketplace is taking that on. Now in Northport, Sarasota, Bradenton, you see these people here are stalemating the market. So these people, even though their inventory is piling up and they see more sellers on their street for sale and they see less buyers coming through their showings, they're telling their realtors to go fly a kite, we're not dropping the price and they're staring off the other, so other side. So essentially what may happen is if you see more inventory in spring dumping in, the numbers going higher because in all likelihood, these areas are only gonna see stacking inventory. You know, if, if there's not a major swing in demand, and I don't think there's going to be until the populace buys into the fact that this is more affordable and then they're going to come back in. I think you're going to see inventory pile on even higher in the south area, the region below Tampa, St. Pete. You know, I think Tampa, St. Pete, they're starting to do the right things, to get rid of their inventory. But again, that's going to invite buyers to come in again eventually. And prices are going to set new trends at lower price. You're going to see price dips for sure in Tampa, St. Pete. The people down south, they're just sitting it out, stalemate. You got some serious stagnancy going on here, which is similar to the villages where the people that want to buy are buying. The sellers don't want to sell. They like their house even more and they're not going to reduce. And inventory is piling up either way. 
and it's going to take time. You're going to see some more sellers. You're going to eventually see a shift. You're going to see agents get real down there. And I think you're going to start to see that shift a little bit more. Folks, let's continue the conversation in the comments real quick. Drop down. Tell me what you think is in the making in your community in the next year. Put your city, your state, and what you think the next 12 months hold. Love to continue the conversation there. And we'll talk to you real soon. Thanks for watching.